Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar on Microsoft Power Apps and SharePoint Forms. My name is Ben Senjum. I'm a collaboration specialist at Doc365. Uh, we're also joined by our partners from Microsoft who will be presenting uh, on today's topic. Here's a quick overview of today's agenda. I'll give a brief introduction about Doc365 and who we are. Uh, then I'll hand it over to Summit uh, with the Microsoft and his team. And we'll finally finish with a Q&A session at the end. Please feel free to use the chat feature to ask questions during the Q&A. So Doc365 is a Microsoft Gold Certified Partner specialized in business productivity, employee communication, and collaboration solutions. We have 16 years of experience building custom solutions on Microsoft platforms leveraging Microsoft Office 365 and SharePoint. What we noticed working with our customers is that many organizations who moved to Office 365 are not able to tap in its full potential for communication and collaboration. At Doc, our, our solutions help organizations to maximize return on investment by increasing productivity and efficiency utilizing Office 365. Doc started out making custom internet solutions from the ground up. Um, over the years, we listened to our customers' needs and we developed more solutions to work off their Office 365 environment. Here are some of the solutions uh, which are part of our productivity uh, platform today. Our pre-built custom internet portal can be deployed within four to six weeks and comes complete with a mobile app. Our project management solution can be used to manage your marketing projects, IT project, or any other project to collaborate with team members and task management. Our contract management solution stores your contracts and simplifies the approval process electronically through workflow templates and can notify the owner when the contracts expire. Our HR system helps to keep track of employee data and makes employee onboarding and offboarding easy. Our learning management solution helps your internal training needs by easily uploading course content and automatically assigning courses to individuals or groups. We have an employee performance management solution which helps you automate the review process. We also have a help desk system, an asset management system, and expense reporting application. We just released our new CRM application recently, and we're also working on a marketing automation system, which is slated to be released in the next few months. What value does Doc add to our partners? We do have superior customer support and training, which helps your team ramp up faster. We have simple yet engaging platform, which allows for quicker employee adoption and better engagement. A quick and painless implementation process with typical deployment times for our customer intranets in four to six weeks, and our add-on solutions in around one to two weeks. We also offer free feature updates after deployment when new features and updates come out for Microsoft and Doc. We can update your platform at no additional cost. Okay, and so now I'd like to hand it over to Smith to discuss the Microsoft Power Apps and SharePoint forms. Thanks, Ben. So I welcome you all to today's session on uh, Microsoft Power Apps and Flows. Along with that, we are going to discuss about Microsoft Forms and how they get integrated with our other applications. All right, so moving on um, to our first slide, let's let's just look at the agenda, what we are going to discuss about. Today, we are going to talk about uh, digital transformation. Then we are going to talk about how or what databases are in use when we talk about using Power Apps or Flows or Forms altogether. What are on-premise uh, gateways which can be utilized for uh, these uh, Power Platform applications? Then we are going to uh, discuss about a bit of introduction towards Microsoft Forms. Then we are going to have introduction towards uh, Power Apps as well as Flows altogether. And then we are going to provide you a small demo. We'll show you a demo how exactly you can start as a beginner uh, with Power Apps or Flows or Forms if, if required. Now, when we talk about digital transformation, how exactly we are we are looking towards digital transformation. So like to, in today's world, everything is moving towards cloud and everybody is trying to automate their work to make it easier, right? So what we are trying to do is we are trying to build an intel intelligent uh, cloud platform, which gives you the accessibility towards, uh, you know, connecting multiple or using multiple connectors and then use uh, the latest technology like uh, Microsoft Graphs or Graph API or any other code which might be required to achieve uh, the objective for utilizing or customizing the environment as per our need. Now, Microsoft does gives you a platform that, like if, if I just remove Microsoft from the picture, how exactly uh, nowadays people try to, uh, you know, customize the things or how they try to uh, transform um, 
into into a solution as per the need so what basically people used to do is they they spin up a virtual machine or they use a server hardware wherein they start performing coding and then create a solution create the web uh, web parts or uh, you know a packet services and then uh, it it the code is being provided or it's been placed on a particular website for hosting or maybe somewhere within uh, the server from where uh, it's been pulled up as as a hosting service and then it it's been delivered to uh, the components now from the hardware perspective it becomes pretty much difficult for managing the hardware and then performing the coding stuff and then troubleshooting the same or you know the whole management becomes pretty much difficult nowadays so microsoft is giving a platform wherein it is easier for you with some kind of uh, templates and some applications like power apps flows which gives you pre-handed uh, you know templates or uh, snippets to to be utilized for uh, customizing the solution these power power platforms also gives you the uh, you know enhanced feature or other capability for people who are not developers okay or are not core developers like me you know um and they they um you know we we can create our customization pretty easily using the ui mode and before i move move ahead let me introduce myself guys again uh, like ben mentioned i am sumit uh, from microsoft i'm a partner technical consultant for uh, you, you guys, wherein we provide consultation on different uh, products which we offer in Microsoft. Okay, basically on the modern workplace area. So I'm also joined with my colleague Abhishek, uh, who's gonna, you know, handle more questions and answers. Even I'm gonna handle the same. But yeah, uh, he, he's gonna assist me as well with, uh, you know, any questions I'm not able to give you the answers for. So we both are going to uh, help you guys. So coming back to our topic on digital transformation, so we are trying to build an intelligent uh, cloud platform, which is not only enabled with the applications like we are talking about power platforms or maybe Microsoft graphs or any other applications, but also it includes our machine learning concept. Okay, Microsoft is providing by default, uh, you know, machine learning program uh, algorithm at the back end, which actually looks into what exactly your requirement is and then it even it gives you suggestions that okay you must uh, use this or you must um, you know make a code or you must use this application for your usability then we are also creating more personal computing for you guys now how exactly that is helping you out is again uh, with the machine learning program and securing your environment and making you enable with the different technologies and different uh, you know Power Platform features, it makes easier for you to pull out the reports or it makes easier for you to automate the process as per the need and, and the requirement. And in a nutshell, what exactly it is, uh, you know, giving us, it is actually reinventing our productivity and business processes, which is our ultimate goal to uh, make things working. Now, if we talk about the application components right over here, so what exactly we basically used to have, one of them is databases. The other one is the application layer. Now, what database is doing is, it's the source from where we are gonna pull the information. Now, database can be any. It can be, we, we can talk about SQL databases, we can talk about, you know, access databases, we can talk about any any storage device where we are putting the information from where we would like to pull the information and uh, that's, that's what our database means, right? Then we have our application layer, which is the user interface or UI which is gonna pull the information from the database and then we are gonna you know, customize it maybe using some um, you know, logics or business layers to make it un understandable or representable uh, you know, to, to the client or to the partners or uh, to the users at the end of the day, which can be consumed pretty easily. Right now, if I talk about, for an example, let's let's talk about SharePoint. Now, what exactly it does? So SharePoint at the back end, it is using SQL database. Now. Obviously, who knows about SQL database, they know that, okay, it's a tabular format and the data has been stored in a tabular format. But if you are using SharePoint, you know that how exactly we are we are receiving the data or how it's being visualized. So uh, if in case we have created a list, we have created a library or we have created a document library, the documents are being saved. Now at the back end, all, the, all of the data is getting saved in the SQL databases, right? And how it's been fetched, uh, on SharePoint, how the user interface is manipulating with the data and it is displaying us is the logic or business layer which actually provides uh, with, with the integration with the user interface 
or the application layer to give you a visual representation of the data being stored in our databases. All right. Now, if we look at the databases, uh, again, what can be our databases furthermore being uh, utilized when we talk about from the Power Platform um, area? Okay, so we can use, uh, you know, SharePoint, we can use OneDrive, we can use Dynamics, we can even use third party applications like Salesforce. Um, we can even talk about any other connector in the world uh, with which. Uh, like maybe you know Azure Automation or Azure Data Lake, uh, Data Lake or Basecamp 2 or Bitbucket, these applications does also serves us as databases and we can pull the information. Now, with Microsoft products, you are getting default, uh, you know, or I would say by default, you are getting the databases like SharePoint, OneDrive, Dynamics 365 or others, uh, including whatever is being included in our Office 365 or Microsoft 365 package uh, or the component, uh, you know, as, as a whole uh, in, a, in a suite. So you can utilize those. But again, since this solution with Power Platform, it's is not just limited with uh, only a cloud solution. It also incurs or it also gives you the flexibility that you can connect to an on-premise solution or maybe uh, to other solutions or to other applications which are not part of Microsoft, right? That also gives you the extensibility that you can connect through that. And uh, for an example, like I mentioned about Salesforce. So Salesforce is a Java-based platform, right? You perform your coding, you perform, you save your databases and then you create a user interface to display the data. Now. If in case the data is, sa is saved in Salesforce and you would like to pull up the information from there, maybe on, on a kind of a mobile app or maybe for some kind of automation. So how you can do that? You're not gonna migrate the data to any other uh, representative, uh, you know, rep representative database and then you pull up the information. So over here with our Power Platform, you have the flexibility that or uh, extensibility that you can connect to Salesforce directly and then you can pull the information and display it accordingly uh, to whatever application you want to use within it, right? Same goes with other, uh, you know, third party applications like I mentioned about from the uh, Azure space area or Basecamp or Bit, uh, Bitbucket. All of those are also available for you to utilize. Now, this particular screen is giving you pretty much limited you know choices right now because the screen is short and the list is pretty huge so there are many uh, you know connectors which you can utilize um, you know to connect to the databases and to pull the information in the end all right so yeah as i was uh, talking about even the on premise gateways and finally we do have common data services as well to be utilized Right. If in case you guys are pretty much familiar with common data services, then it would be easier for you to understand that how we can operate it. So again, um, for people who do not, who are not aware of common data services, so it's basically again a kind of an API connector being utilized, or the services um, and your intermediate services, which actually communicates with some applications. Let's say um, you know on-premise databases. Uh, for an example, I'm just giving an example. Though we do have uh, on-premise data gateways, but yeah. If there is any application, for an example, if we talk about uh, Azure queues, okay? Now, if in case we do not have any connector for uh, Azure queues, so how, and, and we have to pull up the information from Azure queues, so how we can do that? So common data service is again a platform wherein you can create some connectors using the keys uh, for Azure queues, and then you can connect it to the Power Platform, maybe in Flows or in Power Apps, and then you can fetch the information for the usability. Now, why exactly it is mentioned premium? We'll talk about it in, in later slides. So we'll we'll talk about premium uh, categorization of common data services and maybe others. Okay, so uh, let's stay tuned to that. All right. Now let's see what we have for our on-premise gateways or on-premise data gateways. So how exactly or what exactly we are trying to pull up from on-premise gateways. So if you see that. Uh, at the bottom of the screen, we have on-premise data sources. Now, those data sources can be like SQL Server, as I mentioned, SQL Server analysis service, maybe reporting services, SharePoint files, or other databases sources like, you know, again, all ADBs, which we create, access database, as I stated about uh, SQL uh, reporting services. And furthermore, any database which have the capability to be a data source 
can be connected to our power platform area or with the cloud services. Now, how exactly we are trying to do that is we are using the application gateway. So what basically we are trying to do is we are creating a data source connection file along with the credentials being embedded into it. Now, if uh, you guys have worked with SharePoint uh, in on-premises, you might have heard about how we create data connections maybe for some web parts, right? And um, if in case we have to pull the information, we, we have to create a data connection string. Right. And that particular data connection string is nothing but it gives you the instance that, okay, what would be the source for myself, uh, for my data? And then what would be the credentials? What would be the mode for, uh, you know, communication between the, these two applications? And then once a data connection file or data connection string is available to us, we provide it into the configuration of the destination application on which we would like to use it. And then we pull the information in the same uh, from, uh, from whatever source we have. Right. That's our application gateway. That's what we are trying to create. Now, how we are connecting it to our cloud information or cloud infrastructure is then we are using Azure Service Bus. Okay, so that application gateway is then connected with Azure Service Bus for communication, and then we we are creating a cloud service gateway as well. So, again, our data connection is getting encrypted and it is getting you know modified with respect to as as a kind of a, you know identifiable a source. Um, for the uh, for the power platforms to be uh, to be utilized okay and then it it must be encrypted so that's why we are putting some encryptions on top of the string which should not be you know uh, hacked or maybe you know it should be compromised by any means and then we are utilizing that gateway uh, cloud service under multiple applications the services like power bi or uh, power apps or microsoft flows or even the azure uh, logic apps as well for that matter OK, so that's how we, we use to create our on premise gateways or we uh, the usability of on premise gateways with our power platform components. Now, let's quickly have a, an introduction towards uh, Microsoft Forms. So what basically Microsoft Forms is OK now. You, if in case you guys are working on SharePoint, you must be aware that, OK, you know, we, we create list libraries. Right. And that too, if we talk about the modern UI, which has been introduced, uh, you know, in, in 2019, it's it's now available in SharePoint Server 2019. And also it's now available with the Office 365 and a Microsoft 365 SharePoint Online. Everybody is trying to use the modern UI. Now, when we create a list library within that, how exactly it works, or even if you talk about the legacy SharePoint, how uh, a list library used to react. It, it was a repository, yes. It was a data asset management kind of a, a, you know, repository, but when we tried to fill the information, there were two modes for us, like, you know, one was a kind of a form which we used to use, all right? We create, by default, it gives us a form kind of a concept and we try to put the information and it gets saved in the list library. In a similar format, in the new UI or user interface, the form had been, you know, slightly modified with respect to the modern UI and we are using it. Right. But what if in past we, we were supposed to customize it? Right. We, we uh, generally used to use InfoPath forms at that point of time. Right. So we, we try to, you know, um, make it dynamic or with respect to the responses, what the users used to use. And then we used to create our InfoPath forms. Now, though, with SharePoint Online, now we have some other component instead of InfoPath Forms to replace the same or to have, uh, you know, that kind of uh, flexibility. But also, if in case we just need only forms, maybe for quiz, maybe for surveys, you know, or some just form filling, we do also are providing Microsoft Forms as a separate channel or as a separate component altogether, wherein you can which can be used only for uh, filling out the form or filling out the initial subqueries, which we for, for for which we do not have to maintain a list library altogether. Okay, so forms is giving you the extensibility to create surveys, quiz, or you know, kind of a registration form, and much more. Not only for a desktop application or uh, through the I mean, the accessibility is not just via the desktop application, but also it is pretty much integrable with your mobile phone. So previously for mobile phone, we have to define or design an application. Right now with forms, you do not have to perform any uh, further customization. The default form is capable enough that it automatically adjusts, uh, adjusts itself uh, with respect to the format of a mobile interface. And you can use the forms directly in your mobile phone. 
then also you can share that particular form to anyone, maybe to students, maybe to colleagues, maybe to partners, maybe to clients, you know, internal as well as external. You can provide the information uh, to whom you would like to, uh, you know, send this particular form. And then also you can make it anonymous or you can even ask the identity for the user to be captured. OK, so those all options are pretty much available. And as soon as the users start filling it, you can see the results on the real time. Now, how exactly there is a survey link which is available to you and there is a response list or a response tab available to you. Now, if in case you have sent the, uh, this particular form to 100 users, it is not mandatory that you have to wait for all 100 users to complete the form and then you may see the results. As soon as even a single user responds to the form, you can see the response matrices right in the response tab and you can analyze the data. You can export the data for the user or otherwise you can wait for all of the results and then export it or use it as, as per your will. All right. So forms makes your life pretty much easier to fill it, uh, fill up the form and give you the life easiness. Now, also, if you, if you talk about the designing, it's pretty much rich. Now, um, let me tell you this. Previously, we were having Microsoft Forms only. Now we have Microsoft Forms Pro. Okay, that's a licensed version, obviously. Uh, but again, it gives you further or far more, um, you know, uh, rich designer capabilities. So you can design your form as per your will with respect to, you know, some dynamic information or uh, some graphical representation or some, uh, you know, making it, you know, look good to your eyes you can you can design that form and then you can uh, use it as per your requirement obviously it is user friendly form as i stated like you can use the form on the web version as well as the mobile version the difference would not be i mean i won't say there would be much of the difference uh, with respect to the display it would be just uh, how the user face or, or user interface is actually adjusting the values. Uh, for an example, if you can see in the screenshot, I may be using on mobile phone, I'm getting you know a kind of two tabs or two buttons for yes and no um, kind of a choice. Whereas uh, if I talk about on the on the desktop version or maybe on the web version, I'm getting it as a radio button kind of thing. Right. So only a display may change a little bit to adjust with respect to user interface, but the functionality or everything will remain as it is. And then obviously you can analyze it pretty well. It automatically by default on the portal itself gives you a graphical representation along with the actual matrices, which you can export and then may, you know, you can play with the power pivots or uh, the information, how, how you would like to manipulate with it you can completely play with it um, to provide the analysis, maybe to your leadership or whomsoever is responsible for the same. All right, that was more or less about forms. And we can integrate forms in our in SharePoint. For an example, we can, if in case we have created a form, I do have, uh, you know, since I'm sharing a link with, with users, so that as, I mean, since it is a link to, um, to be utilized, I can add that particular link as a web page on my SharePoint. You can use the content editor web part or uh, just URL viewer web part so that uh, you provide the URL and it would be available as a paged form in your SharePoint, which you can save. And the responses are getting saved in the forms console. All right, so that is also pretty much possible. You can connect to, uh, to SharePoint. Power apps. Okay, so Power Apps is a service for creating and using custom business apps uh, across platform. Now, like we were talking about SharePoint, okay? Now, as I stated in, in past, how we use SharePoint for customizing the forms, we were using info platforms, right? Now, we have Power Apps, which had been replaced, or you can say it's a new component available to customize our form, right? Now, it's pretty easy to use because we have two modes of, uh, you know, um, power apps to be utilized. One is the canvas mode and the other one is a, mo a model driven mode. Now, canvas mode is um, or canvas um, power apps are basically the applications wherein you have the full control with respect to how you would like to put the data. Whereas the model driven mode is with respect to the data which we used to provide or maybe the data source uh, which is pro, uh, which we 
try to connect with our power apps uh, is how the uh, you know the model will drive the uh, application now for an example if i take um, you know an example let's say i create a list library let's say for asset management okay now i have to create a, an um, you know a power app for it or maybe i have to create uh, a customized app as per the form maybe filled by the users or or even we can take uh, an example for hospital industry right now what happens is if in case there is there is a patient who comes into the counter and they would like to fill up their details and they would like to get an appointment fixed with the uh, with the doctor so how they can do that you know either uh, you know previously we used to have all those manual entries on some forms and then uh, the receptionist used to you know fill up the information in the laptop or uh, or on the system and then they used to generate an appointment now with the ability with power apps even if you are sitting at home it's just you need to uh, you know open the power apps uh, you know that particular app which would be available to you click on the form and provide the details within the power apps and you can fix the appointment automatically with the next available doctor now how easy would it be and the first thing is how easily you can fill up the information that's that's the best thing because you are connecting the uh, you know power apps with let's say uh, some kind of existing data sources maybe some databases like uh, sql database or uh, analytics database or reporting server databases or maybe other databases then you have a graphical representation of the data how it should be displayed uh, on the form now i'm just i'm just uh, thinking about any of the app which we can uh, you know take an example how exactly it is easier for us to fill up in uh, uh, you know in, in mobile phone and then we use it okay uh, just give me a minute let me just quickly toggle my brain over there um, or maybe if if in, if any one of you can put up one of the examples of uh, of any app uh, you know you might be using so maybe you know you can you can say that okay let's let's talk about um, yeah i mean if in case you have to uh, if you have to build up an app for starbucks for an example right you can do that you can simply select from the menu that okay these are the choices of coffee you would like to have in the morning you you can select that uh, these are a type of brunches or uh, you know eatables which you would like to order just select from the drop down and click on submit and it will the order would be placed uh, you, a token would be generated which you can show on the counter and then you can get the uh, you know your product for the consumables so you it's it's like how fast you you are uh, building an application for yourself and how instantly you get the response and the alert at the background being sent to the uh, you know required party is what the uh, power of power app says and since it is not just limited for sharepoint i just used one of the examples power apps can also be integrated with multiple applications maybe like salesforce maybe like with uh, you know uh, azure services maybe any other different component which has the connectivity or if they are communicating uh, communicating using the common data services right and uh, using microsoft graphs or graph api you can connect or you can build that particular infrastructure on power apps and uh, use that particular application on your mobile phone for, uh, for for that matter all right now definitely you can build useful apps without writing the code now how exactly you are writing uh, how we are using uh, power apps without writing the code is like since I mentioned about the example, the best example is we are connecting to our uh, you know SharePoint world, okay, with the list library. Now, what we generally used to do is we go to the uh, list library, we create multiple columns, right? Now, since it had been integrated with Power Apps, you do see when you create a uh, list library under the uh, you know ribbon of uh, list library, you will see an option which says. Uh, create the form in power apps okay you just click on it and the canvas would be created like as you can see in this particular screenshot now it gives you the flexibility to define your design how you would like to show this particular data and how simply you would you want to add or remove the columns which are available in your actual form in list library maybe you want some limited columns to be filled by users over here through the mobile app or maybe you want all of them but maybe you know as per your screen you let's say for an example um you know 
there are 15 or 20 odd columns which you would like to fill but since when you are building up a form maybe with respect to the form capacity or the display layout form says okay you know it should be best that you must only add eight columns or i have added eight columns it is not uh, you know just restricting you right over there to only use eight columns but also it is giving you the flexibility that you can add more it's just it will become a scroller bar but yeah you can add more as per your requirement and then you can adjust the values how exactly you would like to operate with them and then you can implement your own logics with respect to how the things shall be filled onto it and then what would be the next reaction on the uh, what would be the reaction on the next column like uh, maybe a dynamic information is being entered into one of the columns and respectively an information should be pulled in the next column automatically right so all those logical functions all those extensibility is pretty much visible and you can write uh, you, you know you can just connect it stating that okay this is the connectivity with this particular column so on and so forth you do not have to provide any custom code like people generally used uh, you know go to the visual studio and they start coding that okay if this is uh, if this value selected this perform this action so on and so forth right so without even writing codes just drag and drop the values uh, drag and drop the columns over there and connect it to the respective information that's all without writing code your app can be built with uh, with power apps you know yes it gives you the functionality to publish the app instantly for web and mobile phones so as soon as you publish it your app will be available definitely you do not need any app store which you need to install to get all those apps simply there is an application named as power apps which you can use or the application name would be available you can simply use that um, you know app go to your play store or go to your google store uh, google app store go to any of these app stores and the application would be available to you on your mobile phone. Just search for that particular application and it would be available. You do not have to register your app anywhere else. Okay, your apps are pretty much available in the web world uh, once you create it and once you publish it in your, uh, from your power apps. Now, if I, if we see how exactly it works, just, uh, you know, from the connectivity perspective so as you can see in the in the right bottom your data is being connected to multiple data data sources including the custom uh, you know custom apis maybe your data is again as i stated it can be saved in an excel it can it can be saved in some cloud application it is saved in sql database it's been saved some or the other way okay uh, whichever is being considered as a data source so at the data source level you are saving your data then you are creating a connection to it a connection string gets created right once a connection string gets created uh, which is again automatic like if in case you are triggering it from the application itself so for an example as i talked about sharepoint now if in case you are creating a, a power app for a list library that already have a connection uh, or the feasibility to connect to power apps directly so as soon as it launches power apps it at the background it creates the connection string otherwise what you simply you can do is when you go to the power apps portal and then you have to build the form uh, maybe for another application or uh, even for sharepoint there is uh, you know the data connection option available in the menu wherein you can go and you can say that okay i need to create a new connection once you click on new connection you can define the source what would be my data source okay and then a data connection would be created so the next thing is to create the data connection once a data connection is created since you are into the power apps studio you simply go over there and you try to build your application you know maybe with drag and drop uh, kind of thing or you are actually writing a code kind of thing as well uh, it's it's not that though i mentioned that okay without code you can build an app but yes with code also you can build the app that's also visibility which is available over there in power apps so the uh, the thing is that you are actually creating an experience or creating a visual experience for users with respect to how your form will look like uh, and again this particular form which you might be creating will be standard whether we are using on a mobile phone or a, a you know tablet or on a web version as well so on all of the things it will be standard uh, as per as per the need and it will fit it will fit to the window whichever window we are trying to use it for okay so you build a visual expression of your form then 
you publish your app for the people within your organization so that it can be accessed okay you can publish it only for your internal users to maybe or maybe for some users uh, you know to test it out and then uh, you can publish it for the web or the mobile for um, you know to be accessed using any of your mobile phones like android or windows or uh, you know ios devices or maybe on the desktop versions as well right so that's the kind of a flow or i would say uh, you know a representation on or, or chain how it works um, with power apps all right the next thing is about data uh, processing so how exactly uh, you know data processing happens so it's it's basically about the event trigger like you know how logic used to happen when there is a trigger there is some kind of schedule if you uh, might have uh, input and then there would be a kind of a um, you know manual action so how data processing works so basically either it's a trigger with respect to a data you know maybe let's say an item is being created in sharepoint so it must trigger that's that's a trigger for me and uh, there must be an action within the power apps to to happen right or otherwise if the information had already been entered maybe i have created a schedule that okay after five minutes uh, you must check if an item is being created you must perform this action or if there is a manual button to be pressed those are the triggers for us to implement or uh, to start processing the data for or within our applications so these are basically our general triggers uh, triggers or uh, data processing startups which we use um, you know within our applications right now let's talk about microsoft flows so that was all about um, you know um, having power apps and how we can use it now i just wanted to mention the last slide which i just showed you about the data processing that is also can be considered for microsoft flows now what exactly microsoft flows is so microsoft flows is used for automation pro uh, uh, you know making processes automated okay or for an automation process now how exactly it works or what exactly it works for so just consider a flow you know uh, you know a visual flow a uh, visual flow how exactly it used to work so maybe there is a condition which you have uh, provided then there is a check that okay if it is true or if it is not true then perform this action perform that action or go to this next step or go to that next step or if in case there is a parallel uh, you know step or an, uh, analysis which you have to perform and then the action has to be taken care so just consider a workflow right uh, how you would like to perform an action for an example again get, uh, taking one of the examples let's say in my outlook mailbox if in case i receive an email okay and that contains an attachment right i need to save that particular attachment to my uh, to my sharepoint site or to a document library within sharepoint site how you can do that okay what will be the process and how automatic uh, you know automatically it should it should, uh, it should perform that particular action that's what microsoft flows do for you okay there are default templates which are available which you can you know um, use for this matter but also you can create your own custom flow uh, as per your requirement so by default like as i took an example wherein uh, an email comes in and there is an attachment it should get saved to the sharepoint site then there definitely there is a default template available for it but again what if i need more actions to it as soon as an email is being uh, you know received if in case i flag that particular email only then the um, attachment should be saved to sharepoint i do not have that kind of uh, you know template uh, available but i can make my own for for that matter okay so that's where it comes so if you see uh, like i stated there are uh, you know templates which are available few of the examples i have shown in this particular slide you can simply go to flows.microsoft.com you can use the free version to see and even you can see uh, you know the free templates which are available over there like for an example when a member is added to mailchimp list copy it to a sharepoint list you know so we are not just working between or within the scope of office 365 or microsoft 365 we are even communicating with external world or the third party applications uh you know to microsoft yeah, okay so that's definitely not limited to only specific components there are many third party applications which can be pretty much integrated uh you know with the application or with flows but also again common data service also applies over here if in case i do not have any application which contains a connector 
for uh, for my application to be used then i can create a common data service uh, api for that particular application and i can use that api for my functionality for read or write or do whatever kind of actions uh, on flows all right so now that's that's more on uh, you know we talked about microsoft flows or power apps or forms now let's just see in the real world okay now let's now this is my office 365 portal with, within which i am licensed to use power apps sharepoint and forms now let's let's uh, take a look to all the components we discussed okay first of all let me take you to the forms okay microsoft form style is pretty much available on my portal.office.com and uh, i can simply start creating my form so maybe i want to create a quiz or maybe i want to create a form i can simply use it so i can add the title okay this is for iq test okay now i can add the description or then again i can start my questions maybe okay this is a text field for an example okay so i can say that uh, you know for an example who was the um president in 1990 for the united states right i can provide some kind of you know information this would be the answer and the correct answer can uh, what exactly the correct answer is or i can simply add the answer okay um, you know maybe if i'm not wrong guys my gk is pretty much bad okay so maybe this is the answer so if somebody provides this answer uh, it should match to this particular information and what would be the points which I would like to give to that particular um, You know question. So this is the point then I can add more questions Maybe with respect to rating or with respect to kind of a date or choice or even furthermore I have more options available or again. I can create more sections to it now This is my questionnaire area, which is when I create it It will be and if in case I have to look to it. So this is how it looks Okay um, this is the IQ test. Okay, this is first question. If you submit your answer, if you click on submit, let's say I put maybe, you know, um, if I put something, you know, your response has been submitted. Obviously, I can see that. So what if I see the result? It's wrong. The answer, the correct answer is this. And my points are zero, right? And how would, would be the mobile view? This is kind of the mobile view I'm seeing. Okay, so that's how it, it looks like it's it's pretty simple i have not designed anything right i'm just using a pretty uh, layman language i just went to uh, the questioning and i am keeping on adding the information now if you see this responses you know i see this a graphical representation or a pie chart representation with respect to what response was being captured you know how many responses were being captured what is the average score whether this particular form is active or not right if I want to delete the responses or maybe I want to create a summary link for it or maybe I want to print it or I want this particular information to be opened in Excel for, for my further analysis. You know, these kind of things I can pretty much, you know, uh, make it available. Then I do have the theme for my forms. By default, it's a green theme. I can have a, some colorful themes or maybe I can, you know, create some custom themes maybe some customized color or maybe you know i can upload a pay uh, image maybe uh, from bing search or maybe if in case i have on onedrive or on my desktop for as as a background uh, to my questionnaire over here right and i can preview it and i can see this so, so this particular green will be replaced with the theme which uh, which i selected okay so that's how in in a similar uh, or in a simple terms we create a form and we start uh, you know using it i can use the branching uh, categorization you know i can make furthermore settings like um sorry about that i can furthermore you know um make more changes who uh, can fill out this form anyone with the link can respond only in the pe uh, only people in my organization can respond and what would be the options for the responses whether i want to capture uh, you know start date end date you know if in case i have to shuffle the questions because <laughs> you know sometimes people become uh, you know uh, people tend to take the screenshots of the answers and then st they start processing with it so i can shuffle the questions so that it can be anonymous for people 
and so on and so forth. These all are options available to me. And even I can customize a thank you message at the end that once the form is completely been submitted, a thank you message should be sent to the user, right? So all of these options are pretty much available. Now this form, which I'm displaying to you right now, it's the generic form. Microsoft Forms, I do not have the license for Microsoft Form because it's a, a bigger version for me. So, but again, that contains more of the, uh, you know, possibilities wherein we can have more rich text and more images to be added with every kind of responses or questions. And, uh, you know, analysis, uh, you know, analysis of result is far much more better than this, uh, this one which we are viewing right now. Right. So that was more or less on the forms. Now let's have a look at Power Apps. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open a SharePoint site and then we'll see about a list which how we can integrate that particular list with let's say forms if in case I have to build a, uh, a Power Apps form for it. Okay. So let's say this is my SharePoint site and um, let's say this is one of my list library in which or which I would like to customize or I want to create a Power Apps form for myself. So I have like case number, title, case type, severity on furthermore, you know, columns which I have created. Now you see this drop down for apps. So it says create an app or see all apps if in case you have or customize the form itself. Now what exactly these two options are, maybe there would be a question, customize the forms or customize forms. This customized form gives you the option or, uh, you know, if in case I've already created an app or maybe I want to customize the view of this particular form. Now, let's say for an example, right now, if I click on new, this is the form by default, which I'm getting from the SharePoint desk library. If in case I have to customize this particular form in Power Apps, I can simply use this customize with Power Apps or otherwise I can simply click on uh, drop down and customize forms right from here. Okay, which will change the look and feel of uh, the new button over here for the form of this library or otherwise if in case I have to create an app for it. So for an example, I say that it's for case management. I give it a name and I click on create an app. Okay, so it is going to launch power apps and what exactly it is doing in the back end is it is creating a default theme for me a default layout of the columns and information I have already provided on my system. Along with that, it is creating a data connection at the back end with whatever data source it is. You know, you see this building your app. So it's creating the data connection at the back end, uh, whether it is SharePoint or with SharePoint, it is the SQL database or something else. And then it is going to show me my form or my application. How exactly would it look like? Right, so it's building. It's almost done. It's saving to Power Apps since it created a layout for me. All right, so over here, if you can see this in the left, what I have is a browse screen. So this is a browse screen. You, I can search for the information right over here, right? And it is gonna display the information for me. Then I have a detail screen, which gives me the details, how exactly, uh, I mean, if in case I select one of the item, what would be the details I'm gonna see right over there, right? And then there is the edit screen. Now, if in case I'm going to edit it, what would be the controls I may have? Now, why exactly am I getting all these screens? Because probably with the browse screen, I may do not want, uh, you know, everything to be displayed, like even, uh, you know, create an icon or shuffle it or maybe refresh it. I do not want that. So I may control that particular options or maybe in the details screen, maybe, you know, I have further more details, like maybe the client name. I do not want the client name to be displayed. So I can remove this particular column or in the edit screen, I may want to add a sign to, or I do not want the case description to be added, or maybe furthermore, you know, whatever, um, you know, plus minus I want to do, do with respect to my display, I can simply, you know, perform that particular action. So like I can go over here in the detail screen, in the edit form, you know, I can say align, align to what? 
you know to sections you know reorder uh, i can i can do that you know or maybe i can simply go to the advanced settings right over here and i can or or specifically to whatever property i'm looking for right now i'm looking at the edit form itself like the first one right what are the fields i can edit the fields like right now i'm using title okay i am having the case number if in case i want to add more fields so i can simply choose the fields which are already available to me maybe i might have created right maybe like you know file name extension i may want to show this so i can click on this and i can click on add and it will be added to my particular form now if you see at the bottom file name extension is being added right that's how we can add more and if in case i have to see the preview i can simply click on this f5 button and i can see the preview okay how exactly would it look like like see there is a drop down if i say it is for design if the severity is high you know what who to whom it had been assigned i can simply type the name what would be the client name what would be the status name how exactly it will look like that's what my preview will see and what i can do is i can simply publish this particular site or maybe you know i can uh, share this particular app with my colleagues like maybe abhishek uh, who's here in the in the call so that he can also contribute to this particular app like for from the editing perspective okay so i can simply share with other users to make it uh, you know my coworkers can use the app or uh, you know modify the app if in uh, in my absence and furthermore that's how we work with our app and this is the default app i'm talking about otherwise you can simply go to home of power apps you know create an app from a blank right or model driven app you know or portal for blank or maybe start from the data source like a canvas app so if in case i say okay i wanted to go for a, a blank one how or what type of format i'm looking for maybe a tablet format or a phone format i provide a name let's say okay this is test um app and i say create it okay now once i create uh, click on create it is going to give me a blank screen or maybe it may ask me for some kind of templates i may have right so first thing as i stated if you remember the flow the first thing is it is going to ask me about my data source okay i have to select i have to provide the information of the data source right so you see this it says within the power app studio where i want to create a form or maybe i'm i'm looking for a gallery to be created or otherwise i can skip it so this is particular blank for me connect to data right it gives me the information connect to data right over here and i can you know add from the common data services i can add uh, you know contacts or activities or other things or otherwise i can simply you know uh, from file section right over here i can go to connections it's launching okay here i can go to connections i can see if in case i have any connection which would be related to my uh, you know operation or no or otherwise i can simply click on new connection and i can create a connection maybe with uh, with flows with onedrive with sql server for an example right i need to provide its information and then i am done with it once i click on create a data connection would be created and i can utilize that particular data connection in my uh, you know form i might be creating at that point of time right that's how uh, we can create a data connection and then we can keep on inserting the fields we can add the fields with respect to our utilization and uh, you know our form can be built accordingly since we have a pretty less time to discuss so i'm just going to quickly jump on microsoft flows right over here so that was more or less about power apps um i would request you all since you are learning just go to uh, powerapps.microsoft.com try to explore yourself how or, or what apps or templates are available and how you can create one because the best thing to learn is until and unless you do not jump into the uh, into the waters you won't be able to swim right so start start utilizing it now flows as i stated we have many templates available now if you see over here uh, you know there are many templates which are available to me multiple step flows or approval request or adding conditions or maybe using on premise gateways if i talk about templates like featured maybe for productivity i am i might be using get a push, a push notification with updates from the flows blog or maybe click button to email a note or send forms responses for approval even it is been connecting through forms or even much more 
is what I have under the forms uh, with, the, with the templates. Maybe for data collection, with Power Apps as a button, maybe I may be putting a button within the Power Apps that, okay, it must trigger uh, some action within the flow, okay? Um, furthermore, like maybe you trigger from Power BI, some triggers from, uh, you know, Planner. So how basically, I mean, these are some templates which are pretty hand, uh, you know, available to us. We can simply use one of the templates, just provide the uh, information within the source and destination and our template is, or our flow is created. But what if, I need to create my own flow. I can simply click on, okay, either from new dropdown, click created from template or from a visual template or automated or instant or a scheduled one. So if I say, let's say instant one, okay, it will still give me what will be my triggers. I can simply say skip. And I have the complete blank, uh, you know, template or a complete blank flow available to me. Now, sources can be anything. Maybe my trigger is from SharePoint site, okay? I say SharePoint, here is my SharePoint. Now what triggers I have? The trigger is maybe if, a, if an item is being selected for a selected item, when a site has requested to join a hub site, you know, when a file is created in a folder or when a file is generally created or when an item is deleted or file is deleted, item is created, item is deleted, modified. These all are my triggers. Now if in case I say that, okay, file is created in a folder, Okay, now what I, what I need to do is I need to provide which site collection or which site I'm talking about. So I have to select uh, the address, what will be the folder or what's the folder I'm talking about, right? So it will be maybe in one of the document libraries, um, let's say in the shared document library, okay? There is a folder, okay? I, I can simply go furthermore in uh, in this shared document library, okay, within shared document library, I'm talking about if in case uh, it's been created in BI centers as one of the folder when a file is created in this folder. Okay, what would be my next step? Okay, what is the new step? Whether I want a branch step or I want a simple action to be performed. So let's say I want an email. So uh, it will be under Outlook, right? Because Outlook will be my so, uh, destination application, right? So Office 365 Outlook we are talking about. So, okay, action is send an email to me, right? I can simply click on send an email to whom I need to send, okay? What would be the subject? I can pull the subject right from there as file name. I can put a body, okay? This file, uh, this file was created by, you know, who actually created is something I can pull from the above um, you know, filters, or maybe I can use some expression filters right over there uh, or expression content from here, right? So I can I can do that. What are my further more advanced options? I can send as, if in case I do have rights for send as, I can simply provide the email address for the other user or maybe a generic non-repliable email and I can provide that right over here and I can save this particular form. Now, if in case I need to add more action before it, or maybe I need to add a parallel branch to it. So I can do that. Maybe I'm looking for a condition over here. So I can say uh, with respect to this condition, uh, like controls for condition that, okay, if the value of this, or if the file name is equals to, or, you know, is greater than, or I mean, you know, whatever conditions I may want to with respect to the filter, this will be the yes condition and this will be the no condition. And then again, it may have its own branches for adding the action or maybe another trigger for that matter, okay? So you can create multiple nested or further, uh, you know, branched flows with respect to one of the triggers being performed on any of the, uh, you know, um, any of the triggers or any of the applications altogether. And that's how you create a flow. So simply what you need to do is the next step, you can save it. You can check the flow by default that what type of, uh, you know, errors it might contain, which you can fix pre-handedly. And then you can test it right over here since it is grayed out, I have not saved it. So you can click on test uh, with the values uh, you may enter, maybe manually triggered or maybe automatically with one of the previously triggered actions. And then you can, uh, you know, showcase your uh, flow. How would it work? Okay. That's how we work with our uh, flows. Moving on quickly um, towards our next thing, let's just quickly look at the licensing, okay? So 
Power Apps and Microsoft Flows are first of all available to you as a, you know, free license under any Office 365 licensing we talk about. Okay, basically the business plan or premium where, wherein all these connectors or uh, other workload applications are being included. Okay, not just we talk about, you know, if you, if you say that, okay, I have Office Pro Plus, it will include uh, Power Apps or Flows or not. So it will not. So we are talking about basically a component based or suite based uh, Office plans. Okay, so that's available. Otherwise, we have Power Apps Plan 1 and Plan 2, which actually you know, comprises of further more uh, enhancements. So for an example, let me see if in case I have the chart available. Yeah, so these are the costs, but what advanced options are available, okay? And again, these plans are per user per month, okay? So for an example, with uh, uh, plan one, you would be able to use the premium connectors. Now, premium connectors are like, if you remember, there was a premium connector named with Azure, uh, you know, Azure services or even for Salesforce for that matter. So those are premium connectors. Many of them are premium connectors, but most of them are still available as a default, which you can use, right? So if in case they are not being categorized as premium, so within the free version of license, of Office 365 for Power Apps and Flows, you can use those connectors. Otherwise, for let's say common data services or any of those premium connectors, you have to use a plan, a plan one or maybe plan two. And if I talk about just Power Apps plan, so Power Apps plan one and plan two does include Flows plan one and plan two respectively. Okay, and basically their difference furthermore is with respect to the services being provided, the number of triggers uh, which is going to happen like free flow gives you just trigger for 750 triggers per user per month, right? And Power Apps gives you trigger or instances which can be initiated is like, I believe 2000, if I'm not wrong uh, with the figures. So that is given uh, to you by default as a free version. But what if you say that, you know, my flows and my Power Apps instances will be far much more of the usability per user per month then probably you have to look for plans because they will give you more instances respectively as per the plannings, okay? So we can share the articles with you. You can simply look at, uh, you know, the whole picture of the licensing and then uh, uh, you can decide which act, which license you may have to proceed with, all right? So that was about flows, power apps, and, uh, you know, forms to some extent. Any questions, guys, you may have, like we'll, we'll share this particular slide deck with you guys. You can refer to all these resources and that's it. Thank you guys for listening to me. Uh, that was part of me on, uh, on Power Apps and Flows. I'm open for any of the questions you may have. Well, if there's no more questions, uh, thank you very much. And uh, Summit, thank you very much for joining uh, us along with your team. And if you'd like to see a demo of Docs Mobile Solutions built off Microsoft Power Apps, like our internet app, Instant Spec, instant expense or project management mobile, please feel free to email me at ben at mydoc365.com or visit our website at my, mydoc365.com. Please join us on October 22nd for a webinar on tips and strategies for a strong CRM. Uh, thank you everyone for joining us for today's webinar and we look forward to collaborating with you in the future.